Stan Gibalisco here, avid shortwave listener and proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV. At your service, someone has uh, asked me whether or not they ought to get a preamplifier for their shortwave radio receiver. They have an old <coughs> receiver. It doesn't have quite the sensitivity that the more modern ones do. And, you know, that's one thing about all this modern solid state electronics and digital signal processing. They really have done a fabulous job with receiver technology. Vastly better than they ever were in the past. But uh, someone has an old, uh, mostly vacuum tube type of uh, shortwave radio receiver, and they're asking me whether or not they need. A receiver preamplifier and the answer is as usual for questions like this maybe maybe if you are having trouble hearing weak signals you have to ask yourself why that is is it because everything is just faint in your receiver or is it because there's too much human-made noise around, which uh, is masking the signal that you want to hear? If the answer is that it's just too weak, and all, the only noise that you're hearing is internal receiver hiss, you ever hear that term? Receiver hiss? That's the internal noise generated by the components in the radio itself, usually in the stages uh, nearest to the antenna, the radio frequency amplifier stages. Uh, and uh, that is amplified by subsequent stages. A typical shortwave radio has your antenna a front end radio frequency amplifier of some kind or another and front end just means closest to the antenna then you will oftentimes after that encounter some kind of a mixer with a local oscillator that provides your tuning that mixer provides a constant intermediate frequency and that intermediate frequency is amplified by another amplifier circuit and some selectivity is also added at that point selectivity meaning the ability of the receiver to pick out the signal that you want from amongst a lot of signals near it in frequency and then finally you get to a detector stage also known as a demodulator and thence to your audio amplifier and thence to your headset or speaker so signals kind of go like this through this radio now a preamplifier goes between your front end or your first RF amplifier and your antenna and you can just install it uh, right at the amplifier input here between the uh, you know run the antenna into your preamplifier and then it supposedly will provide some gain so that everything that goes down the pike in your receiver thereafter is louder and that is literally going to be true whether you need the preamplifier or whether it does any actual good or not everything is going to be louder but the problem is is this if you already have quite a bit of noise generated in these stages right here the amplifier and the mixer you you, you know really don't have to worry much about noise from your oscillator but your amplifier and your mixer, if they generate too much noise, then your IF amplifier and your audio amplifier 
are going to conspire to amplify that noise along with all the signals. And if the noise is already competing with the signal to begin with, a preamplifier isn't going to make the signal to noise ratio any better. It's just going to make everything louder. What you need to really concern yourself with here is not the gain. The gain in a radio is simply the amount to which it amplifies things. It's just a simplistic figure. You might have a gain, say a power gain of 30 dB corresponds to a 1,000 fold increase in power. A power gain of 60 dB would correspond to a 1 million or 10 to the 6th fold increase in power. As for voltage, you just double all of those figures. So, but, but, but anyway, gain is just a way of expressing the extent to which a circuit amplifies everything. But what you need to be concerned with is not the gain. If the thing is loud enough so that you can hear it, then all you really need to be worried about is the signal to noise or S to N ratio. Sometimes they talk about the signal plus noise to noise ratio. That is the amount by which the signal strength exceeds the strength of the noise. If you already have a lot of noise and you have a signal coming in that's competing with that noise, and you add a preamplifier between your antenna and your front end in your radio, you're going to make everything louder, but you're not going to make the signal to noise ratio any better. A typical figure for gain in a preamplifier circuit, a good one, might provide 15 decibels of gain. A reasonable one might provide 10 decibels of gain. A 10 decibel uh, amount of gain is a 10 to 1 power ratio. It just works out like that. But if you have a preamplifier with say 10 dB of gain and you already have noise competing with your signal, then you're going to make the noise 10 times stronger and your signal 10 times stronger and the only thing is, you're just going to make everything louder, like turning up the volume. If it's already loud enough for you to hear in the first place, the preamplifier isn't going to do you any good. It's only when signals are so weak that your radio has trouble picking them up at all. And in general, the preamplifiers or preamps work better at higher frequencies than they do at lower frequencies. And on the short wave bands, generally speaking, by higher frequencies, I mean frequencies in excess of 10 megahertz and when you get up near the upper range of an old shortwave radio like the one this viewer has say 25 megahertz you may find that a preamplifier will in fact do you some good but way down where the atmospheric and human made noise are a bigger problem say the 1.8 megahertz amateur radio band you're probably not going to find the preamplifier of any real use. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, preamplifier circuits, by the way, are fairly simple and straightforward, and I describe some of them, I believe, in my book, Teach Yourself, Electricity and Electronics. In any case, 
you can find all of my books by going to Amazon.com and just entering my name in the author search, Stan Jibalisco. You can also do it by going to my website, sciencewriter.net. I believe if you Google on the name Stan Jibalisco, you're going to just, uh, sciencewriter.net is going to be the first hit you get, I think. Try it and see. <laughs> it was the last time I tried it. Stan Jibalisco, W1GV, that's my ham radio call sign. It goes out in Morse code, mostly. Until next time, 73, which means best regards in ham radio lingo. And so long.